Hi, this is Melissa with CalSWEC, and you are watching a recorded webinar overview of the Child Development eLearning Module content proposed for Common Core 3.0. Um, this module is uh, posted on our website in PowerPoint format so that you can also review it by looking at the documents there. Um, we are going to go through the PowerPoint in this webinar and uh, just give an overview of the uh, content. Um, I do recommend that you also go to the website so that you can download the full um, PowerPoint and read the notes, as that will give you a full picture of the content. Um, but we'll walk through it here as well. Um, just to start out, I want to um, give a couple of acknowledgments to people who were involved in the development of this content so far, and to say thank you to Lisa Molinar of Shared Vision Consultants, who um, provided the initial content development. Um, Savon Banks of CalSWEC has been um, further developing the content and uh, will be um, transforming it into an e-learning module once we have stakeholder feedback about the content. I also want to say thank you to our content development oversight group who have been involved in establishing the learning objectives and um, reviewing the preliminary content for this module as well. And uh, CDOG includes Margot Hinson, Irene Becker, Soledad Caldera Gamage, Joanne Pritchard, Jennifer Cannell, Leslie Zeitler, Donna Toolman, and Michelle Briens. And um, if I've forgotten anyone, thank you. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do as part of this webinar is go to the CalSWEC website. Um, because this is a pre-recorded webinar, I can't include a live link, but you can see the web address there on the screen. And I'll give you a minute to write it down. It's um, http calswec.berkeley.edu common core 3.0. Um, if you Google CalSweat Common Core 3.0, the page that we'll be going to is the first result that you get in that Google search. So that's another way to access it. And by going to this website, you will have access to all the written materials for Common Core 3.0 content um, stakeholder review, as well as a link to the survey where you can fill, your, um, fill in with your content feedback. So let's switch over and take a look at that website. Um, I want to give apologies in advance that I can't edit these recorded webinars, so there may be um, pauses or uh, little um, glitches while I switch back and forth between things. I appreciate your patience with that. So here we are at the um, Common Core 3.0 stakeholder review page of the CalSWEC website. You can see that it has a link to my email, mconnelly at berkeley.edu. Um, please send me an email if you have any questions or need any assistance accessing the materials, or if you prefer to give your feedback that way, um, you're welcome to do that. I also want to point out that we have four live webinars scheduled throughout the first couple weeks of January, um, and you can use these webinars to provide your feedback uh, through a live and interactive format. Um, I'll be hosting these webinars along with some members of our CDOG group, and we'll give an overview of the full content for this assessment block. Um, so, and I just want to be clear about what that content includes. There are three e-learning modules, four classroom modules, and two field activities in this block. Um, and this is up for stakeholder review during the month of January. And uh, then we'll take your uh, review comments and make revisions to the materials. And then we're set to do a pilot in April and then implement across the state after that. Um, so if you're interested and able to participate in one of these live webinars, the registration link is here on our web page. Um, we also have pre-recorded webinars um, for each of the pieces of content. And um, you can, once you watch one of the pre-recorded webinars, you can use this link to access a feedback survey and share your thoughts about the content. That link will be live starting tomorrow, January 5th. Um, we also have posted all of the written materials for all of the um, 
content for this block. So the Introduction to Child Development content is here. Uh, it'll open as a PDF of the um, PowerPoint with the notes pages. So you can read the notes and see the content on the slides. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this will later be transformed into an e-learning module that will be self-directed and available to the trainees. And we also have posted the classroom module on critical thinking and assessment, um, the child maltreatment identification content for the online module, the child maltreatment identification skills lab classroom content, our SDM assessment content for the online module, our assessment skills lab classroom content, and uh, our assessment field activities, and our assessing for key child welfare issues classroom module. So um, we are hoping to have feedback from a wide um, group of people all across the state, and we appreciate your um, participation in this process. So now I'm going to go back to the um, slides and uh, start looking through them for the child development e-learning overview. So what we're looking at here is just the beginning uh, slide for the um, e-learning modules. And here's the first slide for the child and youth development content. The goals for this module are um, to give uh, the new social workers an introduction to child development and youth development and milestones that they should expect to see in the children and youth that they work with to help them to understand the effect of culture on developmental milestones, to identify early warning signs about developmental problems, and to identify service intervention areas that address developmental red flags. We also have developed a tool um, that will help the trainees uh, as a field guide uh, to look at development and assess if development is um, moving as it should with the children that they're working with. Let's see. So we start off with a little bit of um, information about why it's important for child welfare workers to understand child development. Um, and we talk a little bit here in this section about the meaning of child development, what child development actually refers to. And this is where we begin the discussion of the five domains that we review in this e-learning module, the social, physical, emotional, cognitive, and sexual development. Um, there are three key three things that we want the uh, new workers to understand from this slide. That it is one of their responsibilities to observe and monitor child development. Um, that each, level, uh, each child's level of development is different and unique to that person. Um, and should be uh, taken into account when you're developing uh, assessments, interviews, and interactions with each child. And finally, it's important to understand that development can be adversely affected by trauma. So when they uh, notice something that raises a concern, it may be a trigger for further assessment or treatment. And we're going to go to the next slide, which talks a little bit about so-called normal development, and we have normal in quotations there because normal is a challenging concept. Um, but using the mathematical definition of the term, um, what we want people to get from this section is that development is dynamic, it continues over time, it constantly changes and it's cumulative. So one task is built upon a previous gain. Um, mastery of tasks at one developmental stage serve as building blocks for mastery of subsequent tasks at the next developmental age. Um, you can see from the picture that normal development is a distributed measurement that compares one child's progress against the majority of children. And this normal distribution, better known as the bell curve, occurs when the majority of children reach a milestone at approximately the same age. Um, so in the example on this page, you can see that over 50% of children begin walking between the ages of 11 and 13 months. Um, but this graphic is also showing that there's a wide range of what's acceptable and, and uh, can be seen for um, development. So some children start walking as early as 9 months, some children walk as late as 16 to, to 17 months, 
and that's all considered typical development. We have a, a little bit of conversation here about heredity and the environment and how that also affects the developmental stages. Um, and then let's see, we move on to talk about the um, developmental domains. So here we are with the social, physical, emotional, cognitive, and sexual domains and the age ranges that um, we'll talk about each of these developmental domains for each of these age ranges. So for the infants and toddlers ages 0 to 2, we'll talk about the development that they um, have over the course of those two years in each of these five domains. Same with the other age groups. Um, moving on, this is a this will be developed into a matching activity. So um, the trainees are given a link to a tool that they can use to help them um, find the answers to this, and that tool will provide them with um, answers to the questions that then they'll use in this matching activity. That tool is also something that they can print out and take with them in the field, or have available at their desk. Um, the next slide goes into a little more um, information about infants and their development. So um, we learn a little more about the social, uh, physical, emotional, cognitive, and sexual development. And then we move into a discussion of toddlers. Um, and for this activity, we have a um, activity where you think about what you already know about the development of toddlers and match the developmental milestone to its corresponding domain. So again, it's recommended that the trainees use their SPECS tool for this activity. That's the downloadable document that they are referred to earlier and that they can take with them and use. Um, we then move on to uh, learn more about toddlers, learning about their development in each of those five domains. And then we have a case vignette where we learn a little bit more about a toddler named Quinn and give the trainees an uh, opportunity to apply their knowledge about child development. Um, so the vignette is provided in a downloadable format, but it's also provided in the e-learning module. Um, and involves Quinn and her mother, Diane. Uh, so what we ask the trainees to do is read the vignette and then identify the domain that's um, really being discussed in the vignette, the developmental domain, and talk about how they would gauge Quinn's development. Um, is she developing early? Is she developing normally? Is she delayed in her development? Or is there a red flag? Um, and the, the information that will come out of this vignette is that there is a red flag about Quinn's um, development, and um, there's likely a medical condition, and there's a recommendation to uh, seek a medical consultation to help figure out what's going on with Quinn. So then we move on to the next area of development where we have preschoolers and again we start with a little activity to test what kind of um, information the trainees already have about preschoolers. Then we go into the um, more information in each of the domains about preschoolers and then we move to school age. Um, we have a, again an interaction for the trainees to engage in about school-aged children and what they already know. So um, they place correct milestones under the correct heading. And then they learn more about school-aged kids for each of the domains. And then they move on to adolescence. Again, it starts with a little quiz and then um, moves on to more information shared with the trainees about adolescence in each of these domains. Then we have a vignette uh, regarding uh, adolescents Mike and Julia. 
and we have an opportunity for the trainees to read a little bit of information about um, Mike and Julia and then apply some of that information in determining which, vin which uh, developmental domain is mostly the focus of the vignette and what kind of um, interaction they might need from their social worker. Uh, from there, we go to emerging adults and give some information about the continued development of emerging adults in the ages of 21 to 25 years. From there, we move to a discussion of culture and child development. And this has a link out to a video um, produced by the American Academy of Pediatrics, driving home the point that children are unique and culture impacts their development. And um, if you access this content via the um, written information that we have posted on our webpage, You'll be able to click the link and view the video. Um, from there, we have a little activity about assessment of family culture and its impact on child development. And then we start talking about social work tools in assessing child development, including um, some application activity with uh, the specs tools and an opportunity to um, think about other ways that social workers can uh, assess child development. And then we have an activity that links um, red flags with the correct age group, and some information about who to contact if there is a red flag. And this information is included in the SPECS tool that the social workers are provided during this activity. Um, finally, there's how to respond to a red flag with a matching activity. And some basic information about developmental disabilities. Um, finally, we're closing out here with some information about human development and some takeaway comments. Um, human development occurs and continues across many domains. Culture and child development are inextricably linked. Uh, social workers should always be mindful of red flags, and teaming with other professionals is the best way to foster healthy development in children. Um, so this is also a link to a child development mobile app that um, they can use and take with them to uh, have in the field in addition to the printed, printable, uh, written, downloadable information. So that brings us to the end of the proposed content for the uh, Common Core Child Development e-learning module. And, um, I hope that you will have a chance to review it and uh, give us your feedback about the information that we've provided. And um, again, please go back to the website and click on that link. And let me scroll back and get you that page to where that website is listed. And you can also email me at mconnelly at berkeley.edu if you have any questions about this curriculum. Thanks.